Vancouver is known to be the most expensive city in all of Canada and it might be first or second. It keeps changing between Vancouver and Toronto. Lately, we've been seeing rent for one bedroom apartment similar to ours go up to $2,700 to $3,300. Groceries is a little bit higher than if you lived somewhere else that is a lower cost of living i'm able to live here and still have enough money to save and invest anytime i watch these videos everyone's transportation expenses are so high when i did the average for this my total transportation spending is only hi everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video i am breaking down how much i spend on an average month as a 30 year old living here in vancouver the way that i'm going to structure this video is i'm going to to take all of my expenses in a month and categorizing them and talking you through each of the categories. I averaged out all of my spending over the last six months and that's how we got to the numbers that I will be showing you today. So I think that that will provide us with the most accurate number for this video. And then timestamps will be linked down below so you guys can click around to the things that interest you the most and all of the numbers here will be in Canadian dollars. Before we get into it, I thought it might be helpful for you guys to know a little bit about who I am. My name is Reza. I am 30 years old. I have been living in Vancouver over the last five and a half years. I moved here in 2017. I'm originally from Mississauga, Ontario, and I moved here for work. I have a day job working in the e-commerce industry. I've been in this industry for a better part of a decade, and majority of my income does come from my day job. Secondly, I run a small business called The Line. We sell stationery and leather goods, and we're currently looking into expanding our assortment. I'd say most of the income that comes from The Line gets reinvested back into the business to continue to grow it. So I don't currently pay myself a salary from The Line, and then and lastly, I also do YouTube videos for fun, which means that I don't currently get paid by YouTube. This is just a hobby for me. And with that out of the way, let's get into how much I spend on an average month living here in Vancouver. We're going to start off with fixed expenses. So think of your fixed expenses as recurring bills that you have every single month. They usually come out at the same time every single month. And typically they're also around the same amount. So think of your rent or your mortgage, your car payment, your utilities, your phone bill, etc. I personally have quite a few fixed expenses. And by the way, I'm gonna be referencing my laptop on the side here. And I'll also say that most of the things on this list are split between my partner and I because we do share these things. So starting off strong with rent, we rent out a one bed, one bath condo here in downtown Vancouver, and it is about 680 square feet. And our total rent is $2,136 a month. And my split for that is $1,068.45. So the money comes out of my partner's account and I would just e-transfer him this amount every single month. And I'll say that this amount seems high, but it's actually on the lower end. And if you know Vancouver real estate, you know that it is quite expensive to buy a house here, but because of those house prices going up, rent has also been going up. So I've noticed over the last five years that I've been here, rent has steadily been growing. I first moved here on my own. I lived in Yaletown and I remember my rent being 1650 and I remember that being so high and I had a roommate. And then shortly after I moved again and my rent went down slightly, but I had two roommates at that time and it was 1350. So definitely a very expensive place to live if you want to live on your own. And when I moved in with my partner, the rent was $2,000 and then it's kind of gone up steadily over the last couple years but because we are in a rent controlled building it could only go up by a certain percentage so i feel like we're pretty lucky that we have stayed in this place and pay a fairly low amount in comparison to what is currently out there lately we've been seeing rent for one bedroom apartment similar to ours go up to 2700 to 3300 so it's definitely gone up really high and i feel like we're quite lucky to have this place and be paying the rent that we currently pay and then next on the list is home insurance i pay 9.95 a month this is just an expense that i have to pay for we also rent out a storage unit in the building so that is 50 dollars split in half and then my half is 25 dollars for utilities, we have internet. My split is $39.20 a month, and we also pay hydro, which is $75. Usually in the summer, it's a little bit less, but typically on average, it is $75. For my phone bill, I pay $73.45 a month to Rogers. Next is our car. We recently got a car, maybe not that recently, it was about a year and a half ago, and we are currently paying this off, so, for my car payment, I pay $413.51 
bi-monthly. And then for car insurance, I pay $80.17. And then the last two things on my fixed expenses is related to my credit card and my debit card. So I do pay a monthly fee for my American Express, which is $12.99. I have the Cobalt card. If you are interested, there is a link down below. And then for my regular checking account, I'm with TD Bank and I pay $16.95. So those are all of my fixed expenses getting into my subscriptions. So subscriptions is a really big one. Everything now has a subscription. And a few months ago, I did kind of a deep clean on all of my subscriptions to make sure that these are things that I actually really need on a day-to-day -day basis. So I feel good about all of these things on my list. These are things that I use almost every single day and I feel like are worth it for the price that they are. So the first one is Spotify. Spotify is $11.19. And then I also have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. This is $10.49. I feel like this one is the most worth it for me. I read so many books and I love my Kindle so much. Next is my Audible subscription. So this allows me to get one book a month and the total for that is $16.74. And then finally, I also have a Sportsnet subscription. This is $16.79. So if you're wondering where is Netflix, where are your like TV subscriptions, my partner does pay for that and we obviously share it. So I don't have it in my subscriptions. And then as I mentioned, I am a small business owner. So I do have some business expenses and these are fixed business expenses, which means they happen every single month. So I run Google ads throughout the month and this is $160. I think that you can set the amount that you want. So you will have a budget for the month and the budget that I set for myself is 160 and then I also have a Google workspace which is eight dollars and 74 cents a month and then I also pay for Klaviyo this is an email marketing platform and I pay 41.96 I really should be sending more emails because I feel like I maybe send one a month for the price of this subscription I feel like I should be sending more emails to kind of make it work harder for me and that is something that I just need to take away. I pay for Canva Pro. This is $16.99. This is an essential if you are a small business owner, I feel like. And then I also use Adobe Creative Cloud. So this allows me to use Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, and Adobe Premiere Pro, which is how I edit my YouTube videos. And that is $43.67. And I also pay for Shopify and Shopify shipping. So on average, I usually pay Shopify $400 a month, but this includes all of my shipping and all of the apps that I use within Shopify. And then getting to the meat of my expenses, these are my variable expenses. So your variable expenses change every single month and they differ for every single person. So starting off with alcohol, typically I like to budget around $25 for this category. And when I averaged it out, I'm actually spending $40 a month, which is, it's not that high, but I think I just need to like adjust my numbers in my budget spreadsheet. So this would be anything that I get at the liquor store or if I'm getting drinks out with a friend. And then next is my coffee budget. I usually like to put down $50 here every single month. And on average, I've been spending $85. I usually get Nespresso pods every single month and that's around $50. And then I think the remaining 35 is when I'm grabbing coffee just out at a coffee shop. So yeah, I think it definitely makes sense. And again, something I probably need to adjust in my monthly budget. The next category is groceries. So groceries, I usually like to budget $300 every single week. This is just my portion of the groceries and I split this in half with my partner. When I did my average, it is about $360 monthly, which is fine. It's not like too crazy. But I do find that groceries here in Vancouver is quite high. I remember being so aware of that when I first moved here because when I would go to a grocery store, my money just wouldn't go as far as it would have when I was still back home. Um, so yes, I would say that groceries is a little bit higher than if you lived somewhere else that is a lower cost of living. Next is personal care. So these are things like getting my nails done or getting a haircut, things like that. My budget here is usually $150 and I only usually spend $87, which is great. I think I can definitely lower down this amount every single month. The next category is dining out. This one is high. I will preface that. I usually like to budget $400 a month, which means it's $100 every single week. And my average spending over the last six months is $600 for dining out, which is so much money. I think that is a lot and that's just for myself. That's just my half. I think that we have been eating out quite a bit. Sorry, not eating out, but actually 
taking out. So we would always use Uber Eats or DoorDash when we don't feel like cooking dinner. We're pretty good with lunch and breakfast and eating here. But for dinner, it's it's been really hard because we both have full-time jobs and sometimes it's hard after a long day of work to cook even though cooking is so nice as well like we definitely love to cook but sometimes we just don't have the time to so most days in the week we do do takeout and i really want to cut down on this expense i think it just means putting in more effort into planning what the dinners will be so that when it's actually time to cook i know exactly what to cook and they've got all the ingredients but yeah i think 600 dollars is a little bit high for this category the next is gym slash yoga membership so i currently have a y yoga membership that's a studio here in downtown vancouver and that is around 145 dollars a month I will say that this is being covered by my employer, so this doesn't actually come out of my own pocket. My employer gives me $200 as an allowance every single month to use for yoga or spin or Pilates, like things like that. So I'm definitely very grateful because it's something that doesn't need to come out of my personal budget. And then transportation. Anytime I watch these videos, everyone's transportation expenses are so high and when i did the average for this my total transportation spending is only five dollars which is insane and then i had to think about like why is that and i think i'm very lucky because the area that i'm in is very central and i can walk anywhere essentially i did mention earlier that we do have a car and for my gas expenses we actually don't pay for gas so our car that we got is an electric car so we don't have to put any gas in it. And in terms of charging, we used to pay maybe like $10 a month. But since going back to the office, the office has charging ports. So we haven't had to pay for charging for the car for a very long time. So I feel really lucky about this. And I'm glad that we ended up getting an electric car. This was actually not even part of the consideration. We got the car because we liked the car and not really thinking that we would save so much money on gas. It was kind of just like a nice thing to realize like gas in Vancouver is very expensive. I think it is the most expensive in all of Canada. So to not have to pay for gas is a blessing in my opinion. So for gas, I don't, I don't spend anything. I think that if you're thinking of moving here, you don't need a car. Vancouver has a lot of options for you. So there is a city bike that you can rent out. We also have two car sharing programs. We've got Evo and we've also got Moto. I've used both of those things. And for a really long time when I didn't have a car, those were the things that I used to get around the city if I needed to. I don't think you need to get a car right away. And yeah, if and if you don't get an electric car and you'd have to pay for gas, I think that would just like blow most of your budget. But yeah, if you are just gonna be moving into the downtown area, you can pretty much walk anywhere and it is very bike friendly if you wanted to bike around. The next category I have is Cypher. Cypher is my cat, if you didn't know, and I spent $35 on him. Again, that is split in half with my partner. I didn't put vet bills here or anything because those are so sporadic. And really, we don't go to the vet every single month. So if we do get a vet bill, I usually take that out of my emergency fund. And it's usually no more than $200 every time we go to the vet. And then for gifts, this is a really fun category. I think in the past, I used to like not really give gifts because I mean, I didn't really make a ton of money at that time and any money that I made, I would kind of try to save it all. I think I'm in a position in my life to be giving more and I've just been a little bit more like generous with my gifts, at least like within my family. So I like to treat people and I like to give gifts to friends and my parents, especially because I don't live with my parents anymore. So over the last six months, the average amount I spend on gifts has been $200. Granted, most of the birthdays for like my family has been the first half of the year. So maybe that's why I've spent a lot. And then in the latter half of the year, I don't really have a ton of people to gift to. So maybe this is kind of just like that weird split. I've been really enjoying giving gifts to other people. It just makes me so happy to give to other people as opposed to receiving, if that makes sense. Okay, next category is YouTube. As I mentioned earlier, I do YouTube for fun and I have had a lot of expenses, especially because I did start YouTube in the earlier part of this year. So when I did the average, it was about $400. And I don't really think that I'm gonna be spending $400 every month going forward. I think these are just like initial startup costs. So I did buy a mic, I bought a new camera. So 
those things I think really hiked up the price of this expense, but I don't imagine myself really spending $400 every single month. And then second to last category is treat yourself. So I mentioned in the previous video that I really like to treat myself, even if it's like a small little milestone that I achieve or something that I've been working really hard on and I want to kind of like treat myself a little bit. That can be getting myself a coffee or a little baked good or something like that, but it could also be a really big purchase. So over the last six months, I've averaged $200 for this category. And again, if I was trying to save money or if finances are not doing so well, this is a category that I can just cut. This is not a necessity, but this is what I've been spending over the last six months for myself. And then the final category is vacation. So vacation is again, sporadic and doesn't happen every single month, but I did plan a really big vacation for myself and my partner back in May. If you haven't watched those videos, I will link them down below, but we went to Paris and Nice and average spending over the last six months has been $700. So if you're wondering what that is, it would be my flights and my accommodations and the trains to and from the city and just general spending in Paris and Nice. So $700 is a lot, but if you take all of those things into consideration, it makes sense. And it's also something that we don't really do that often. I think we go on a really big vacation once, maybe even twice a year. So I don't really feel bad about this. And, and yeah, those are all of my variable expenses. And that is everything that I spend as a 30 year old living here in Vancouver. Vancouver is known to be the most expensive city in all of Canada. And it might be first or second keeps changing between Vancouver and Toronto. And they do think that you can probably get more bang for your buck if you lived in an area that is less expensive than Vancouver. Do I think that what I pay is reasonable? Yes, but I will say that I have the luxury of splitting my fixed expenses with my partner and I know not everyone has that. The other thing is I do have a higher income. I'm able to live here and still have enough money to save and invest. And I know that not everyone is in that position. So I do acknowledge that and I am forever grateful about that. And I want to mention that this video is not to brag at all. This is to just give you guys transparency if maybe you were thinking of moving here or if maybe if you were just curious. Yeah, I hope that this video provided you some insight. And of course, if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video, please make sure to leave them down below. And I'd be keen to know if any of the numbers that I mentioned in this video surprised you or if you were like, yeah, that makes sense. And if you enjoyed this video and want to follow along my personal finance journey, I do make these videos every single month with the real numbers that I have. So please make sure that you are subscribed and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And wherever you are, I hope that you're having an amazing day. Bye, you guys.